Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a simple sales database in Access. So I'm on the home screen, the first screen, and I'm going to select new and select a blank database. Now when you select a database in Access, you have to name it first off, otherwise it'll just be named whatever number is next in sequence. So I'm going to call this sales database and it's going into documents and I'm going to create it what you get first off is a table that's already created for you and the idea is that you can use table fields to populate the columns and you've got the different types of fields across the top here that you can use and you can just insert these as a looking like a spreadsheet but what I want to do is I want to go into design on this and do the same sort of thing, but in the design area. Now the table here, the first table I'm going to do is customers. So I want a table of customers and click OK to that. And it goes into the design area. Now I am, I am going to link my tables together. So I want a table of customers and a table of products. That's the two tables I'm going to use in this sales database, simple one. Now, this ID field has got a key next to it, which is a primary key, this one. Now, for the customers, I'm going to type customer in front of that. So customer ID, so every time I add a new customer, it's set to data type auto number. Now, if I just drop this list down and show you the different data types that you've got there. Now, I had these on the ribbon in the previous screen, but auto number will increment every time I add a new record. Short text is basically up to 255 characters. Long text is five or six pages of memo type text. And you've got number, large number if it's a really big number, date and time, extended date and time, currency, and then the auto number one, a yes, no, field, true or false, OLE object. So that's like object linking and embedding. So you could put photographs, Word documents, um, videos even into your database. A hyperlink field. An attachment, this is where you could have a field where you might have um, lots of sales invoices. The actual invoices themselves are maybe outside of the database, but you can have them hanging off the record. And then calculated field, which we will do um, in the products table for VAT. You'll see how that works. And then there's a lookup wizard, which we'll have a look at also. So to start off with, what information do I need in my table? Now, when you're first designing your tables, you should really have some idea of what information you want to go in the database tables and have that written down somewhere and the data types that you want. So this is going to be a customer one. So what I need is customer name. Now, what you call it is up to you. I'm just going to call it customer name. Uh, what I like to do is just have a capital letter to, to divide the to divide the words. Now this first one is just going to be short text and that is the default. Now if I click on that, 255 is what I said. There's no way a customer name, a customer's name is going to be 255 characters. So if I leave that as the default, Access will allocate that amount of space whether you type that much in or not. So I'm going to change that down to 50 characters. Customer name. Then I'm going to put company. So that'd be like my contact company. Now that can be quite a long list, but it's not going to be more than 255. So I'll leave that there. And then I want address. And that's going to be short text as well. And then you're going to have postcode, no space, postcode. Now, I haven't got one for city, so I'll just insert one there. Insert, and then put city. So address will be like 123 Bowden Lane. City is the city. Postcode. And then you've got country. I'm not going to put all this country and stuff like that. Telephone number. Telephone number. Still goes at short text. You might think a number, a telephone number would go on to number, but that is not the case, because if you did that, it would, uh, and then you put, for example, 0191 in the, in the column, 
because it's a number it would get rid of the zero and it would just say 191 so it does stay on short text for telephone numbers and then you might have email and maybe date if you want in or date I'll put date joined but just to do a date field so now I'm going to type D and it's going to come up with date and time so date and time that they joined your company or purchased their first item so date and time and then you've got some other input information down here if I click into this second line you get what's called an input mask if I click on these three little dots you can force people to type in a certain way in this in input wizard so it's asking me to save the table yep and then I want short date this format and if you click in there that's what they're gonna see so for example you can't type August there at all so that's great I'll just finish that and then for now that's all I want now when you click on each of these fields you can see there's a set of values down here uh, I just want to use one for the city field let's say that you're based in the Northeast you can have a default a default value if I put Newcastle upon Tyne that most of my customers would be from Newcastle um, I could if they're from a different city I could just delete the Newcastle and put whatever they're, they're from so down on the date joined field the rule if I go on there and these ellipses on the right click on there I've got a list of functions that I can use built-in functions and you've got date time and then there's one called date which is what I want to use uh, I don't know why it's done that I must have double clicked let's get rid of that just double click on date but I want it to be greater than or equals to today so oh, okay that puts it in the validation rule area and then if I type a date in the past a box will come on the screen enter a date in the future that's what I want it to, to come up with to remind me if I save that and just test this out if I put a date in there so if I put today's date 09 05 2022 tab that let me do it now if I go back in there press tab and put 08 05 2022 tab that box comes up telling me that I've made a mistake so then I can correct that straight away like so so we know that works and let's go back into design and have a quick look where that was so we did greater than date greater than or equals date and then that's the prompt so once you've got all these columns in if you wish and it's not a bad idea to do this unless it's obvious which most of this is um, you put a description there it says optional of what the field is so if you had codes maybe when we do the customer uh, the product table where you've got codes you might want to describe what that code means if you're going to have abbreviations or anything like that you need to put some narrative in there so people can come and have a look and understand what the fields are but for now that's okay that table let's close that one down now I want to create a new table so create table new so you've got table or table design I want table design so that's how I like to do it so this is going to be the product table so start off with product ID that's going to be a auto number and then we're going to have product name and then we'll have price and that's going to be currency and then we have quantity which I'll just do I'll do stock quantity actually stock QTY and that's going to be a number and now we need to do a couple of calculation fields and I need to trigger it with the VAT so let's call this vatable so if it's vatable I want this to be a yes no field so I can then refer to it and then VAT due column so this is going to have to be a formula so when I go into there I want calculated and it will open up the query builder or expression builder and you have to do a formula that's going to look at vatable 
and if that's true it's going to do 20% so it's an IIF function so if in square brackets vatable close square brackets equals true comma now price times 20 20% so price has to go in square brackets times 0.2 comma otherwise zero nothing don't put anything there close the bracket click OK to that and that formula will go into there the format needs to be currency Let's do currency and then save this this is going to be TBL products okay to that and then no primary key I'll cancel that off for a minute I'll do a primary key this is the primary key you can just click on that so if I save this and then have a look I need to just do a product so let's see if this works before I move on Excel price 200 stock 21 vatable yes so I'm looking for this to work and it does so now I need another field to add the VAT due to price. So if I go back into design, so it's going to be total amount is what I'm calling it. And again, it's a calculated field. And this comes up again. So now I've got, it's going to be price. Uh, double click into there, double click onto price plus VAT due. So VAT due will either have a figure or nothing. Click OK to that. Change the format to currency. Currency. Save. Have a, have a look. 240. That's, that's it. That's all working. So if I take that off, 200. So that's the trigger for that. Calculated field at a table level. Now, if I go back into design, I also need a field in here that's going to link these two tables together. So I want uh, customer ID, and that's a number field, even though it's an auto number. Customer ID, and this needs to be a lookup really to pull in the information. Because if I just save this and have a look, um, customer ID, there's nothing there, and I have to manually type that. And I wouldn't know who this was. So if I just go back into design and do a lookup, I'm going to do the lookup wizard. You could actually just do it down here. You know, I will do it down here actually. So I want it's going to be a combo box, uh, is a table and query, and the table raw source is the customer's table. It is the first column, and the column count. I'm going to have, let's say, five columns showing. Column widths, let's go for two centimeters. And limit to list, no. And I'm just going to go 10 centimeters for that list. Now let's have a look at this because this might, you might have to play around with this a little bit. So the customer ID for this first product is me, Steve Saxton. It's easy to train in building. So maybe I just need three columns, like so. Now, if you run the wizard, it'll just let you put this in there. So let's just do that so you can see the difference. So if I go back and use the wizard, look up wizard. Sometimes it's easier to use the wizard and then look at the result that it puts here. So you want the lookup field to get a value from another table. Yep, yeah. the table is customers. Yep, and then you want, I want customer name just, that's all I want. So it gives you the option through the wizard. Next, I'm not bothered about it being sorted. And that's the example. So it's going to hide the primary key column, which is great. And then, you, what do you want to label you'd like for your lookup field? It's customer ID, that'll do. And I'll just finish that. Save. Now let's have a look. So that drops me in there straight off. 
now that's before I've made a link but let's just go and make a link so now if I close these two tables down so in customers there's one person that's me and there's one product so in products let's go into products let's do another product so let's go for access um, tab 250 pounds tab 23 tab it is vatable so it puts that in there's the amount and let's say that I bought that as well now at the minute this is just two separate tables but they do need to be linked up so on database tools relationships you just drag the tables in and then you do the relationship it's already picked that up so basically one customer can buy many products but what you haven't got here is the one-to-many link now that's picked that up because I did the wizard the lookup wizard now if I double click on this line it opens this box and gives me the option of ticking this enforce referential integrity which means I can't create a customer in this table that doesn't exist in this table that's what that's going to mean if I click OK to that you get the one to many symbol which is great let's save that and then I'll close that so that should allow me to create a query that will pull that information through so if I do a query design and I'll just add the two tables the links already there but I just want the customer name so that should say Steve Saxton if I quick have a quick look it does but I, and I want to see what products is bought and the total amount let's just have a look at that so I brought two products and that's the two products so we know that is now working so if you wanted to add the uh, the v, VAT these two fields so that that and then just move that one to the end just move that to the end so then run that again so it's now yes it is vatable and that's the amount so then I can save this query call it QY QIY products sold so it's a query and then you can base a report on that which I'll do in a later date so just to recap what we've done here we've created two basic tables a customer table a products table and then we've linked the two together and we've done a query that pulls information off both of those tables now in the products table we did calculated fields so we've got some triggers on this fatable field and it reacts to that so in this per in this first session that's all I want to cover so we've looked at creating tables and linking them together and then you can see how that works so on the next session we'll build this up we'll do a form and a report and you can see how that bit works so hopefully that was of use to you for this um, little session thank you for your time and i'll see you on the next one